Hello everyone. Now, as you know, Michael Jordan fans are the worst sports fans of all time. And one of the many reasons why is because they're always saying that the NBA sucked before 1979 because the players weren't skilled. They weren't tall. They weren't strong. They were a bunch of white guys. They weren't athletic and they couldn't dribble. Actually, they say more than these things, but it's not practical to make one video that has each thing. And plus, these examples that I did bring up give you a good idea of what they say. And plus, when it comes to the things they say about the examples that I did bring up, they mostly say the same things about the other examples that I didn't bring up. Now, before I get into this, I want you to know that I made a separate video about how Michael Jordan fans react in general. I made a lot of points in that video that I'm not gonna make in this video. So if you haven't played that video, you might wanna play that video first before you play this video. And also, I made a separate video about how Michael Jordan fans will tear down NBA people and NBA eras. I made a lot of points in that video that I'm not gonna make in this video. So if you haven't played that video, you might wanna play that video first before you play this video. So anyway, I'm gonna explain to you why it is ridiculous when they say that the NBA sucked before 1979 because the players weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble. Here are the reasons why, in no particular order. First, they are disrespecting the past NBA. Next, they are dismissing the past NBA. Next, when they claim to respect the NBA and then they disrespect the past NBA, they are contradicting themselves. Next, when they claim to love the NBA and then they dismiss the past NBA, they are contradicting themselves. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a history of always trying to tear down NBA people and NBA eras to elevate Michael Jordan. So because they have a history of doing these things, that right there shows you that they're not reliable. Next, understand why Michael Jordan fans are saying that the NBA sucked before 1979 because the players weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble. It's because they're trying to elevate Michael Jordan. So that right there shows you that they're not reliable. Next, how do Michael Jordan fans explain that usually the only people who have these takes are Michael Jordan fans? Next, how do Michael Jordan fans explain that most NBA Hall of Famers, most NBA legends, most NBA scouts, and most NBA experts don't agree with them on these things. Next, how do Michael Jordan fans explain that most of the owners that Michael Jordan played for, most of the general managers that Michael Jordan played for, most of the coaches that Michael Jordan played for, and most of the players that Michael Jordan played with don't agree with them on these things. Next, how do Michael Jordan fans explain that Michael Jordan doesn't agree with them on these things? Next, since most of these people don't agree with them on these things, why do Michael Jordan fans sometimes reference some of these people on some topic? Next, you can't have it both ways. Either you think these people are reliable or you don't. Next, if this was the other way around and the Michael Jordan fan was part of the NBA before 1979 and then they got older and they found out that some younger person who wasn't there, who's not an expert on that time, had the same take, they wouldn't like it. That's a contradiction. Next, how come Michael Jordan fans don't have these same takes for other sports? Next, how come Michael Jordan fans don't have these same takes for other things that are outside of sports? Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They will tear down any NBA era before 1979 and after the 1980s and 1990s, but they won't tear down the 1980s and 1990s. That is a contradiction. Next, and that also shows you that they are not reliable. Next, if Michael Jordan fans really believe that they're right about all these things, then that means whenever they rank players for pretty much any list, the players before 1979 should be ranked lower. Next, if Michael Jordan fans really believe that they're right about all these things, then that means 
Whenever they rank NBA players on pretty much any list, the players who played in 1979 and after should always be ranked higher. Next, if Michael Jordan fans really believe that they're right about all these things, then that means that all the players who played before 1979 should not be ranked on any list that ranks players. Next, Michael Jordan fans should be doing the same thing for all the players when it comes to most of the other lists where people rank players. Next, Michael Jordan fans should be doing the same things when it comes to the list that ranks coaches, general managers, owners, and there are more examples, but you get the point. Next, Michael Jordan fans should be doing the same things when it comes to lists that are about other sports. Next, Michael Jordan fans should be doing the same things when it comes to lists that have to do with things outside of sports. Next, you can actually make the point that the NBA from the 1980s and 1990s was one of the worst NBA eras of all time. Next, you can actually make the point that the NBA from the 1980s and 1990s was the worst NBA era of all time. Next, let's go over some logical things. These are some things that I want you to think about logically. Here they are in no particular order. First, it's not logical to think that professional players sucked. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players weren't skilled. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players weren't tall. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players weren't strong. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players weren't good because they are white. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players can only be good if they are not white. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players weren't athletic. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players weren't good at dribbling. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players changed with one of these things in 1979. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players changed with more than one of these things in 1979. Next, it's not logical to think that professional players changed with all of these things in 1979. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players suck. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players weren't skilled. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players weren't tall. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players weren't strong. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players weren't good because they are white. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players can only be good if they are not white. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players weren't athletic. Next, it's not logical to think that NBA players weren't good at dribbling. Next, it's not logical to think that the NBA changed with one of these things in 1979. Next, it's not logical to think that the NBA changed with more than one of these things in 1979. Next, it's not logical to think that the NBA changed with all of these things in 1979. Next, it's one thing if you think that the NBA sucked before 1979, or if you think the NBA before 1979 wasn't skilled, or if you think the NBA before 1979 wasn't tall, or if you think the NBA before 1979 wasn't strong, or if you think the NBA before 1979 were a bunch of white guys, or if you think the NBA before 1979 weren't athletic, or if you think the NBA before 1979 couldn't dribble. If you thought any one of these things by themselves, that would be strange. But if you think more than one of these things, or if you think all of these things, that would be more strange. Next, if Michael Jordan fans really believe that all these things are logical, it's not logical that they wouldn't apply all these things to other sports. Next, if Michael Jordan fans really believe that all these things are logical, then it's not logical that they wouldn't apply all these things to other things that are outside of sports. So these are some logical things for you to consider. Now let's continue. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They say the NBA sucked before 1979 and then it got better in 1979 and after. So by their logic, it should keep getting better as time passes. But they don't say that. They say at some point it stopped getting better. That's a contradiction. Next, they also say at some point it got worse. That's a contradiction. Next, 
They also say, at some point, it got really bad. That's a contradiction. Next, they say that as you go back in time, the NBA was worse. But they don't say that when they go back in time from their present time to the 1990s and 1980s. That's a contradiction. Next, if the NBA sucked before 1979 because the players weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble, then how come all the NBA statistics from 1978 was pretty much the same in 1979? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say they weren't, then how come most of them were the same? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say they weren't, then how come more than half of them were the same? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say they weren't, then how come half of them were the same? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say they weren't, then how come less than half of them were the same? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say they weren't, then how come some of them were the same? You got to be able to explain at least one of these things. Next, let's assume the statistics weren't the same. How do you know it's because the NBA players in 1978 weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble? Next, if the NBA sucked before 1979 because the players weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble, then how come most of the NBA statistics before 1979 were pretty much the same in 1979? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say most of the NBA statistics before 1979 were not pretty much the same in 1979, then how come more than half were the same? Next, if Michael Jordan fans fans say they weren't, then how come half were the same? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say they weren't, then how come less than half were the same? Next, if Michael Jordan fans say they weren't, then how come some were the same? You have to be able to explain at least one of these things. Next, let's assume the statistics weren't the same. How do you know it's because the NBA players before 1979 weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble? Next, the same questions will apply to the NBA statistics before 1979 and the NBA statistics in 1979 and after. Next, now I don't go by analytics, but all the questions I just asked about statistics will apply to analytics. Next, let's assume that the NBA sucked before 1979 because the players weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble. And then, in 1979, that's when everything changed. Well then, all the star players who are healthy, who get lots of minutes, who have the same motivation to play, and there are more examples, but you get the point, should have numbers that go way up or way down in 1979. And they should stay like this after 1979. But there are no star players like this. How do Michael Jordan fans explain this? Next, all NBA legends have someone similar to them. So how do Michael Jordan fans explain that there are players who played before 1979 and did well and did similar to players who played in 1979 and after? Next, you can find players that played before the 1979 season and who also played in 1979 and after. So how do Michael Jordan fans explain this? Next, and the players did well. How do Michael Jordan fans explain this? Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They always act like LeBron James fans are always questioning the past NBA and that LeBron James fans are wrong when they do this. And yet Michael Jordan fans question the past NBA. That's a contradiction. Next, Michael Jordan fans are putting the past players in a lose-lose situation. If the past players don't do well, the Michael Jordan fans can say they suck. If the past players do well, the Michael Jordan fans can say they suck. So no matter what, the Michael Jordan fans can say they suck. That is putting the past players in a lose-lose situation. Next, let's say a player from Michael Jordan's time didn't play in that time and he played in a time that Michael Jordan fans think sucked. They would say that that player sucked. But when that same player actually played in Michael Jordan's time, they don't say that that player sucked. Let me give you an example. John Stockton. If John Stockton played in the past, they would say he sucked. But John Stockton actually played in Michael Jordan's time, and they don't say that he sucked. Next, not all players who were skilled 
who were tall, who were strong, who were not white guys, who were athletic, and who could dribble, could make the NBA before 1979. Next. Same thing goes for the players who were trying to get to the NBA in 1979 or after. Next, not everyone in 1979 and after were skilled or tall or strong and were non-white guys and they were athletic and they could dribble. Next, or if you want, not everyone in 1979 and after were the most skilled or the tallest or the strongest or were not white or the most athletic or were the best dribblers. Next. If a player from the past didn't do something that was done in 1979 or after, it could be because it was against a rule. Next. Or it could be because it was frowned upon. Next. Or it could be because they didn't know about it. Next. Whatever the reason was, you can't hold it against them. Next. Whatever a past player didn't do or supposedly couldn't do, there's no reason to think that they couldn't do it if they wanted to. Next. Just because a past player didn't do something, it doesn't mean that the entire NBA sucked before 1979 because the players weren't skilled, they weren't tall, they weren't strong, they were a bunch of white guys, they weren't athletic, and they couldn't dribble. Next, the NBA is a professional league. In the past, it was considered by some to be the best basketball league in the world or at least one of the best basketball leagues in the world. So if you say it sucked, it makes no sense. Next, if you say the NBA sucked before 1979, what is the definition of the NBA sucking? Next, how did you come up with this definition? Next, how do you know that your criteria is right? Next, are you consistently applying this to other topics? Next, if you say the NBA before 1979 had players that weren't skilled, what is the definition of skilled? Next, how did you come up with that definition? Next, how do you know that your criteria is right? Next, are you consistently applying this to other topics? Next, if you say the NBA before 1979 had players that weren't tall, what is the definition of tall? Next, how did you come up with this definition? Next, how do you know that your criteria is right? Next, are you consistently applying this to other topics? Next, if you say the NBA before 1979 had players that weren't strong, what is the definition of strong? Next, how did you come up with this definition? Next, how do you know that your criteria is right? Next, are you consistently applying this to other topics? Next, if you say the NBA before 1979 had players that were white, what is the definition of white? Next, how did you come up with this definition? Next, how do you know that your criteria is right? Next, are you consistently applying this to other topics? Next, if you say the NBA before 1979 had players that weren't athletic, what is the definition of athletic? Next, how did you come up with this definition? Next, how do you know that your criteria is right? Next, are you consistently applying this to other topics? Next, if you say the NBA before 1979 had players that couldn't dribble, what is the definition of couldn't dribble? Next, how did you come up with this definition? Next, how do you know that your criteria is right? Next, are you consistently applying this to other topics? Next, let's go to this topic of skills. You don't have to have the most skills to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, you don't have to be really skilled to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players who weren't considered skilled players who dominated the game. Next, there are lots of players in other sports who weren't considered skilled players who dominated that game. Next, even if you think these things are not true, you know it's possible. Next, let's go to this topic of tall. You don't have to be a player who's the tallest to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, you don't have to be really tall to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players who weren't considered tall players who dominated the game. Next, there are lots of players in other sports who weren't considered tall players who dominated that game. Next, even if you think these things are not true, you know it's possible.
Next, let's go to this topic of strong. You don't have to be the strongest to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, you don't have to be really strong to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players who weren't considered strong players who dominated the game. Next, there are lots of players in other sports who weren't considered strong players who dominated that game. Next, even if you think these things are not true, you know it's possible. Next, let's go to this topic of white guys. A white guy or a non-white guy can dominate this game or be above average or be average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players who were considered white or who were not considered white and they dominated the game. Next, there are lots of players in other sports who were white or who weren't white who dominated that game. Next. Even if you think these things are not true, you know it's possible. Next, let's go to this topic of athletic. You don't have to be the most athletic to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, you don't have to be really athletic to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players who weren't considered athletic players who dominated the game. Next, there are lots of players in other sports who weren't considered athletic who dominated that game. Next, even if you think these things are not true, you know it's possible. Next, let's go to this topic of dribbling. You don't have to have the best dribbles to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, you don't have to be a really good dribbler to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players who weren't considered really good dribblers who dominated the game. Next, even if you think these things are not true, you know it's possible. Next, now let's put these things together. You don't have to have the most skills and be the tallest and be the strongest and be a non-white guy and be the most athletic and be the best dribbler to dominate this game or to be above average or to be average or anything else. Next. Again, let's put these things together. You don't have to be really skilled and be really tall and be really strong and be a non-white guy and be really athletic and be a really good dribbler to dominate this game or be above average or to be average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players who weren't considered skilled players, who weren't considered tall players, who weren't considered strong players, who weren't white guys, who weren't considered athletic, and who weren't considered good dribblers, who dominated the game or were above average or were average or anything else. Next, there are lots of players in other sports who weren't considered skilled players, who weren't considered tall, who weren't considered strong, who were not white guys, who weren't considered athletic, who weren't considered good dribblers, who dominated that game, or were above average, or were average, or anything else. Next, even if you think these things are not true, you know it's possible. Next, just because a player has skills, is tall, is strong, is a non-white guy, is athletic, and could dribble, or just because one or more of these things are true, it doesn't mean he is going to make it to the NBA before 1979. Next, it doesn't mean he is going to make it to the NBA in 1979. Next, and it doesn't mean he is going to make it to the NBA after 1979. Next, and no matter what the year is, even if a player makes it to the NBA, it doesn't mean he is going to stay in the NBA. Next, and no matter what the year is, if a player makes it to the NBA, no matter how long he stays there, it doesn't mean he is going to dominate the NBA. Next, and it doesn't mean that he's going to be above average. Next, and it doesn't mean that he's going to be average. Next, and it doesn't mean that he's going to be below average. Next, and it doesn't mean that he's going to get any minutes. Next, use some common sense. A player can be good in one or more areas while simultaneously not being as good in one or more other areas. Next, use some common sense. A player can be good in one or more areas while simultaneously not being good at all in one or more other areas. Next, humans are the same. Humans are humans. There's no reason to think that people before 1979 couldn't do well in 1979 or after. Next, the game before 1979 
is pretty much the same as it was in 1979 and after. Sure, there are differences, but the differences are not that much to where players are going to be so different. So since the game is pretty much the same, it means the NBA is pretty much the same. Next, past players had it harder. That makes what they did harder, so that makes them better. Next, Michael Jordan fans are throwing out statistics. Statistics can show you if the NBA sucked before 1979. Statistics can show you if the players weren't skilled before 1979. Statistics can show you if the players weren't tall before 1979. Statistics can show you if the players weren't strong before 1979. Statistics can show you if non-white players did well before 1979. Statistics can show you if players weren't athletic before 1979. Statistics can show you if players couldn't dribble before 1979. Next, if Michael Jordan fans are going to throw out statistics, then they are not being consistent. Next, if Michael Jordan fans are going to throw out statistics, then they have to do this all the time in the NBA. Next, if Michael Jordan fans are going to throw out statistics, then they have to do this all the time in other sports. Next, if Michael Jordan fans are going to throw out statistics, then they have to do this all the time for other things that are outside of sports. Next, now I don't go by analytics, but Michael Jordan fans go by analytics. And everything that I just brought up for statistics can apply to analytics. Next, when it comes to height, the average height in the NBA before 1979 was similar to the average height in the NBA from 1979 and after. Next, when it comes to race, if Michael Jordan fans really believe that they're right about white people, then by their logic, when it comes to all the players who are on the same level, there should be no white player who is better than a non-white player. Next, when it comes to all the white players and non-white players who are on the same level, they would have to rank all the white players lower than all the non-white players. Next, it also means that white people shouldn't be in the NBA. Next, and it also means if white people made the NBA, they shouldn't stay in the NBA. Next, and it also means if white people stay in the NBA, they should barely get any playing time. Next, and it also means they should not be below average players. Next, and it also means they should not be average players. Next, and it also means that they should not be above average players. Next, and it also means they should not be dominating players. Next, and it also means they should not be all-stars. Next, and it also means they should not be Hall of Famers. Next, and it also means they should not be ranked high. Next, and it also means they should not be considered as being possibly the number one NBA player of all time. Next, and it also means they should not be considered the number one NBA player of all time. Next, these things would apply to other sports. Next, these things would apply to things outside of sports. Next, when Michael Jordan fans think what they think about white players, they are being racist. Next, when Michael Jordan fans think what they think about non-white players, they are being racist. Next, Michael Jordan fans don't even realize that they're being racist. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They claim that they're not racist, and yet sometimes they act racist. That is a contradiction. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They claim to be nice people, and yet sometimes they act racist. That is a contradiction. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They claim to have values, and yet sometimes they act racist. That's a contradiction. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They claim that they don't start drama with people, and yet sometimes they act racist when no one did anything negative to them. That is a contradiction. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They claim that they're smart people, and yet sometimes they act racist. That is a contradiction. Next, Michael Jordan fans have a contradiction. They accuse other people of being racist, and yet sometimes they act racist. That is a contradiction. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 didn't suck. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were skilled. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were tall. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were strong. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were not white. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players
players that were athletic. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that could dribble. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 was the same as the NBA in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were just as skilled as the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were just as tall as the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were just as strong as the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had a similar amount of white players as they had in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were just as athletic as the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that could dribble just as good as the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 was better than the NBA in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were more skilled than the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were more taller than the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were stronger than the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had a similar amount of white players like they had in 1979 and after. It just depends on the year. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that were more athletic than the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA before 1979 had players that could dribble better than the players in 1979 and after. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after sucked. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after had players that weren't skilled. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after had players that weren't tall. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after had players that weren't strong. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after had players that were white. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after had players that were white and were not good. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after had players that were not athletic. Next, there is tons of evidence that the NBA from 1979 and after had players that couldn't dribble. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 weren't skilled. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 wasn't tall. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 wasn't strong. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 was white. Next, there is no fact to prove that white players suck. Next, there is no fact to prove that non-white players don't suck. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 wasn't athletic. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 couldn't dribble. Next, there is no fact to prove that one of these things before 1979 made the NBA suck. Next, there is no fact to prove that more than one of these things before 1979 made the NBA suck. Next, there is no fact to prove that all of these things before 1979 made the NBA suck. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked and then all of a sudden it didn't suck in 1979 and after. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked 
because the players weren't skilled, and then all of a sudden, the players were skilled in 1979 and after. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players weren't tall, and then all of a sudden, the players were tall in 1979 and after. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players weren't strong, and then all of a sudden, the players were strong in 1979 and after. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players were white, and then all of a sudden, the players weren't white in 1979 and after. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players weren't athletic, and then all of a sudden, the players were athletic in 1979 and after. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players couldn't dribble, and then all of a sudden, the players could dribble in 1979 and after. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked, and then all of a sudden, it didn't suck in 1979 and after, and then the NBA got better. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players weren't skilled, and then all of a sudden the players were skilled in 1979 and after, and then the NBA got better. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players weren't tall, and then all of a sudden the players were tall in 1979 and after, and then then the NBA got better. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players weren't strong, and then all of a sudden the players were strong in 1979 and after, and then the NBA got better. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players were white, and then all of a sudden there were less white players in 1979 and after, and then the NBA got better. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players weren't athletic, and then all of a sudden the players were athletic in 1979 and after, and then the NBA got better. Next, there is no fact to prove that the NBA before 1979 sucked because the players couldn't dribble, and then all of a sudden the players could dribble in 1979 and after, and then the NBA got better. Hey, please subscribe, and if you disagree with me on something, you can go on my program and show me your facts on whatever you disagree on. If you want to go on, let's set it up. Send me an email. The email is right there in the description section. Thank you.